the eight walls there. It's all right. Especially why it's a good spot. Alright. I am now ready to leave out to uh, Oakland and go pick up the first half of my load over at Gonzales. Uh, I will need to get a trailer wash out first. Um, there's a place, looks like there's a small truck stop and wash on the, the just south of uh, where Highway 152 meets up with 101 in Gilroy that I can go to. Another option I have is in Salinas right down the street from Pilot. I'll probably go to the, the truck stop there in Gilroy check it out. Never been there before. It looks like it's a pretty busy place, though, from what it looks like. At least, at least looking at their uh, their satellite view. Yeah, that's smart. Stop on the damn railroad tracks, dumbass. Let's also ignore the keep clear part. Probably not the most heavily used, but still think it's stupid to sit on top of you know that the container truck. The container truck right behind me is sitting on top of the tracks now. Uh, the, on the the ones that were back there. This guy's just automatically assume that no no train's gonna come and that they just have to fill whatever space there is and that's stupid. It takes nothing for a train to come right through when you to be in the way and have no uh, no option. Just because there's space there between us doesn't mean you have to fill it. Not to mention it says keep clear. It amazes me how dumb some uh, some people are. I can't fill the space there anyway. It's an interesting setup on that car. It's actually it's I, I kind of like that color scheme there. Again, why are we camping out on there? turn arrow but say left lane that 
makes no sense. Someone needs to fix that sign and put it, tell it it's, uh, to use the correct lane. Or at least say, uh, you know, distinguish between which lane you need to be in for southbound and which lane to be in the, for the northbound side. Yeah, you need to be in the left lane for the northbound side, but if I'm going towards San Jose, then I need to be on the right. closely and are in a, in a spot where we can't see you anyway, even if you're right behind us. Now just think if you're crossing over from our right to our left, and maybe while you're, you're when we look left, see that it's clear, look right, if they even do look, if the trucker even does look right doesn't see you and then they start to move over and all of a sudden you're there even after they've, uh, they've tried to clear the left side it's a great way to have a nasty accident
this, uh, this other container truck is going to be driving slower than everybody else. I'm going to say the hell with it. Get your truck in your lane. Part of stay on the high side of your lane on the curve that you not remember. You not get taught that part in CDO school?
traffic in the adjacent lane like this slowing, it's a good idea to slow down too. Generally best practice is don't go more than maybe like 10 to 15 miles an hour faster than the traffic in the, the, the slowest you know, the, the slowest traffic in the adjacent lanes. So all it takes is one of those guys in the adjacent lane to cut over into your lane to get around the slower person or maybe they find out they're they realize they you know they get impatient or they they find out they're in the wrong lane or something and they just suddenly want to come over it, it happens a lot and a lot of accidents get caused by that it's, you know you could say that it's the the person's fault who just did the lane change yeah but if you're also going too fast for conditions you're a contributor to the accident that's it that's avoidable and trust me you are going to lose some money and uh, even if you uh even if you're not the at fault driver or not primarily at fault they're not the at fault driver as far as criminal uh, liability is concerned or uh, that's there are possibly citations and stuff, but over. Um, but when you drive a truck for a living, you don't want to have any anything preventable. Even if it's the other driver's fault, if you could have done something to prevent it, you are expected to do something to prevent it. You are a professional driver. You have an obligation to. Uh, be above everybody else you know, on the road as far as uh, driving abilities and uh, defensive driving is concerned. They go to court, I mean, if you end up uh, having an accident, even if it's the other driver's fault, they can still sue you, or their insurance company can still sue yours, and then they can still find that you're partially liable for damage and injury, whatever, even if you were, even if it was their own fault. If it's found that you, you at least had shared at least some fault in it, even if it's like 75, 25, okay, well, if there's like, like $200,000 worth of damage and injury to deal with, and that's 75,000, um, it's, uh, it's found that they're 75% at fault, well, Guess what? You're still going to pay fifty thousand dollars out of your insurance. Not something you want to deal with. If you're a company driver, you have an accident that could have been avoided. There's, I mean, a lot of companies will uh, will terminate drivers without question if they find that if they find that they're uh, involved in accident, it's especially a serious accident. Serious accident that could have been uh, could have been avoided. Not something you want on your driving record, and, and a lot of companies won't re uh, won't hire you if they see that you had that kind of incident on your record. Driving too fast for conditions, you know, going too much, too fast compared to the traffic in the adjacent lane is one way you can, you can have an accident where it, it can definitely be considered uh, avoidable. Because you have to expect that the traffic in the next lane over is going to do that kind of thing, come up, cut over into you. And, just to figure out that people do that. Dwelling Boulevard, 30, or exit 30, okay, so about 30 miles away from San Jose is what I interpret that to mean.
fit. Now, I'm not going to get in the space next to this container if I don't need to occupy it. Because I get up next to him, but then what am I going to do after I'm, you know, once I am there? I don't need to be right on the right on the back end of that minivan up there. Or as you see, I'm getting ready to get cut off by this uh, Mercedes. So what space was there quickly went away, didn't it? couple of things there to consider. It's like a container needs to have an escape route. I need to have an escape route if possible. If, uh, if something does happen, uh, if one of us does need to change lanes for some reason. We're not in each other's way. Traffic slowing here is, is a good example. I don't know if the container is going to end up wanting to come over or not. I doubt it, but. Okay, we're in the Hayward area, as you might have noticed from the signs that I passed already. Yeah, yeah, coming up on A Street exit here, exit 29. We'll also be going through Union City and Fremont, and then Milpitas, or Milpitas, whatever, and then, then it'll be San Jose. Hayward, population 149,000, elevation 104. People trying to get on the, they just got on the freeway trying to move left and then people already on the freeway evidently trying to get off the freeway soon. Highway 92 coming up. Okay, the way this silver car's hanging out like that at this speed, uh, tells me they're looking for an opening to move right. Yep. exit. Looks like we'll have another minor delay coming up here just before I get to Union City. Now these guys just came off that other interchange and they're an exit only lane so I have to be, uh, have to assume that a lot of these guys are going to get off, are going to move left. So I'm going to move left and be out of the way so they can more easily make their lane changes. 
Exit 26, Tennyson Road coming out. Next exit after that is Industrial Parkway, a mile and a quarter away, exit 25. Scratcher for me in this area, uh, just north of it. We're already past uh, Interstate 238. I'm not getting the rhyme or reason to why they named it Interstate 238. 238 should be south of I-40 and north of I-10. Should be just south of I-40. Why is it way up here near I-80? And then, uh, okay, because 238 tells me it's a, two, uh, it's a 200 version, or basically a half loop or a full loop around Interstate 38. There is no such thing as Interstate 38 that I know of. So why is there a 238? It should be some other number, if anything, like a spur, like a... Because it's part of the Interstate 80 network, it branches off of 580 and 880, and so in reality, it should be uh, to me, it should be like a like a 180, 380, 580, 780 kind of thing. Maybe they just ran out of numbers to use or something because they already have all the spurs. Just a uh, now odd numbered 100 interstates, like 100, 300, 500, 700, 900 series. When you see an interstate that starts with an odd numbered hundred, that means that it's a spur. So let's just say, uh, okay, Interstate 105 down in LA area. That goes right by, uh, right, right over to LAX, by the way, if you're not really sure, if you're not familiar. Okay, that connects from Interstate 605 to Interstate 405. And right, right over there where 105 and 405 are, and that area is where LAX is at. Okay, well 105 is a spur route, and, it, and it, it's not, it doesn't connect off of I-5, but it does connect to two other freeways that are also part of the I-5 brand uh, uh, network, so that's why it's named 105. It's a, in a, a 05 means it's an interstate five and then the 100 means it's a spur type route. The even numbered hundreds like 200, 400, 600, and 800 are supposed to be loop routes that, that connect to, uh, usually connect to the same freeway on, on well, both their northern and southern ends or their eastern and western ends or whatever the case might be. There are some oddball ones here, uh, elsewhere here in California, like, explain to me why the 605 freeway in Southern Cal is called the 605. Yeah, it does connect to, uh, it, it does branch off of I-5 down, uh, uh, I forget where exactly it branches in at. I want to say down by, uh, Kind of in the Long Beach area, if I remember right, going or uh, going down, down into Orange County. But the north end of it ends at the 210 freeway. It doesn't connect to the it connect back up to I-5 on the on the other end of it. So to me, that one should be a, a odd numbered hundred freeway, not an even number. That would be what you'd call a spur route. It connects to I-5 on one end, but the other end it does not. 710, that's another one that's in California. Yeah, that's all, that goes by down, like, close to downtown LA. Branches off of I-10 and it goes south toward, uh, you know, into Long Beach. It's also the 110 freeway, that's right there by downtown. 
that's called the Harbor Freeway locally, and that goes down into San Pedro, and, you know, and it's it, it just, it's just a spur. Okay, that's at uh, 21, Highway 84, coming up, by the way. got my cruise turned off since uh, well now it looks like I might be able to put it on but I suspect if I set it I'm going to catch up to the, the mail truck in front of me yeah, go ahead and set it and see where we end up at Again, that's the 21, the Coto Road, the Martin Bridge, and California 84 West. Next exit is 84 Eastbound, Thornton Avenue, one and a quarter mile away. A plum tree over here. I think those are plum trees, I don't know. The color of them looks like it could be. Okay, now this Honda minivan, these are remember yeah, you're the one with the right-of-way, not the not the traffic getting on the freeway. And, you know, these, and the girl on the silver car is following too closely behind the, the Honda Element. Or I think that's what that were. I think that's what I was looking at. You stay off each other. Remember, when you're getting onto a freeway from an on-ramp, you don't have right-of-way. So traffic already in the lane has the right-of-way. And you need to create space so you guys can both, uh, so everybody can merge safely. Fremont, next exit. So in the Newark area. Technically only three through lanes. I mean, the, the last lane over is a carpool lane, so it doesn't count as a normal travel lane. Usually with three lanes, here in California, it's illegal for a truck to be in this lane unless you're passing somebody. Now, since you can see that I'm, you know, clearly see that I'm passing people, I'm okay here, but if I'm not passing people, I need to be, I need to move over to, to not be at risk of a ticket. Why do I think this car is going to come over? You got Milpitas uh, license plate frame too, so you might be going all the way into Milpitas. traffic environment like this where I have to keep monitoring, changing speed, it's, it's 
some of you guys might have adaptive crews on your trucks. Me personally, I still don't recommend using the, the let the adaptive crews work and, and you know just turn the crews off when you're in this kind of situation. You need to have positive control of the truck. I have previously driven trucks that have a, uh, that are auto shift and have adaptive crews and collision avoidance systems on them and it's not a good system. Why? Because sometimes the adaptive crews, for example, will, it won't kick in until, uh, sometimes it's, uh, it'll react a little too late and too hard and then, and then someone could be following you a little too closely or someone paying and not uh, following behind you might be uh, not paying enough attention and can crash into the back of you because you're slowing down a little more suddenly because you're relying on a relying on an automated system that you're not supposed to be relying on. You need to have positive control of the vehicle and you can't do it with uh, if, you're, if your foot's off the pedal and letting the, the, the computer control it. Not to mention, I've seen that uh, collision avoidance system have false positives a lot, where it'll just um, suddenly react to something that's not even there. So if you drive a truck like that, you might want to keep your foot on the pedal, even if you're not actually pushing it. At least cover it, that way if, uh, if the system does start doing stupid thing like that, it looks like there's a way station coming up. I've not been on this section of uh, interstate before, by the way. I'm going to move over just to make sure I have the option to get over. Um, now it's closed anyway. As long as the light, the sign stays uh, still. Right. Now it doesn't matter if the sign changes. I got green light anyway now. So I was. Now at least I know my uh, my pre-pass unit didn't have a. It doesn't have a dead battery. Apparently the. The way stations that I went through yesterday or you know, just had their system turned off or something. Because I didn't get any kind of signal at all from either the Tehachapi scale or the one over by Livingston. Uh, that lane looks like it's ending. Let's see if uh, these cars will let me over. It looks like that lane's ending over there. Come on. safety in mind but I also got to make sure people know that they're they're getting into my space not me not the other way around so don't think I'm gonna just willingly give you space that you shouldn't be trying to force me to give you uh, 
construction farm building on the side street. Good possible parking place if I'm ever up here. Seagate, okay. Yeah, Seagate hard drive uh, company. Several trucks parked right here on this street. It's See, this is one of those cases where it's, it's good to be watch, uh, aware of where you're at. You know, what, what's around you because especially when there aren't many places to park in the in this area you know knowledge of this kind of information information can be uh, very uh, very helpful so I just remember over by Seagate and also looks like Tesla's uh, building is right here I guess it's Tesla headquarters I don't know I didn't know if they were right here off this freeway Yeah, right in front of Seagate and Tesla area, there's plenty of road there where I see trucks park. If you're in a pinch, that could be a good place to park. Obviously a truck stop where other traffic is only doing no more than 10 miles an hour, or shouldn't be doing more than 10 miles an hour, if even, actually even less, would be even more ideal, but as you saw over that there's where I had to park earlier, I parked in the middle of the yeah, in the, right in the middle of the street. Not my preferred place to park, but like I say when you're in there when I when you're in the area where I was, it's it's the best option well, the best option available if you don't want to be burning uh, burning up clock uh, starting at 14 hour clock that doesn't need to be started. Or if, you, or if you show up at hours or whatever. Uh, not too much further before we'll be uh, turning off onto the 101. We still have a, at least a few miles, but... I see Montague Expressway three miles away. I'm sure that'll be before I get there. Mountain View, next exit. No exit to Zanker Road. Zanker Road, Zanker Road, whatever. seen signs earlier that the exit uh, 8 Charlie for westbound highway 237 to Mountain View got two exit only lanes there on the right side so through, through, through traffic like me needs to be the third lane to the right or further left 8 Bravo Cal Viras Boulevard and McCarthy Boulevard and eastbound uh, State Route 237. What is next?
to in this situation because the traffic's slower. Anyway, the traffic in the lane that's already in the lane is slower too, so I have to adjust to them. goes up into San Francisco from here, which I was just, just west of San Francisco when I left, so. Is this the same area where I, I remember I, there's a, there's a Walmart over here somewhere, and I, I thought it was on the south end of San Jose. Maybe I'm wrong, but there's this Walmart I remember parking behind, and, you know, that being a good place to park, too, for the area. Not actually on the Walmart property, but there's a street right behind Walmart that you can park at. Sorry, dude. I'm going to pretend to not see you because I can't move over. I got traffic passing me, so it's not safe. And that's what I'm talking about. That's why you don't follow traffic so closely when you're getting on the damn freeway. You back off. That's another one of those cases where I'll leave space for traffic to get over, but I'm not going to leave, I'm not going to uh, tolerate every damn car on the on-ramp being a problem for me, and I can't move over. Back your ass off, and you merge safely with me, not the other way around. Or I need to, I, I'll let you merge safely with me, but like I said, I'm not going to just blatantly give you space that you are not entitled to. Exit 5, Brokaw Road. Just trust me, you came in off my side like that. We have an accident. You're going to be the at-fault driver. And if I, if I show on my dash cam that someone's in uh, to, uh, to the left of me, or actually, it's, a lot of truck drivers are actually trained to not even change lanes no matter what, even if there is a... even if there is an opening in the adjacent lane. Because anytime there's a lane change, there's a... Uh, there's a blind spot that needs to be dealt with, and it's you know, any unnecessary lane change can be unsafe. No, I am gonna. Uh, no, I'm actually I'm gonna stay here because my exit's coming up. Ford Charlie is the 101 North, um, so I'm assuming Ford Bravo or Ford Alpha is probably gonna be the 101. I do see that. Yeah, it's Ford Bravo, 101 South to LA, half a mile away. So, some of these cars might be getting on the southbound 101, so might as well just stay behind them. Okay, I'm going to signal early because I see uh, traffic slowing down over here. Need people in that next lane over, uh, actually behind me to know that I'm that I'm coming over. If they're paying any attention, they'll know that I'm... And they were, they would know that I was going to probably slow down because the traffic slowed down. Okay, it's one of those, again, one of these cases where if you're in that through lane here, it's not a good idea to go much faster than the traffic that's in this exit only lane because it just... See, there's an on-ramp right there. What do you think the traffic on that on-ramp up in front of me is going to do? They're going to try to move left into the lane over, uh, into the through lane more than likely. Not the place to be going fast when there's this kind of a bottleneck going on. The traffic trying to merge in. Other traffic trying to come out. It's bad now. Even without this, uh, this other lane uh, on ramp coming in right here, the traffic that's already in the lane could suddenly change their mind and want to go uh, decide they want to stay on the road and get off at the next exit or something. You never know. I have seen traffic do that. Uh, I guess it didn't matter. I could have just stayed where I was. It looks like. Uh, 
like a meter on or something or is everyone just yeah I think they're just trying to merge safely into the, the slow lane traffic on the southbound 101 yeah that's all it is it's just people trying to merge because they don't they don't get the concept of leaving space oh I see also it's the traffic trying to it's also Traffic that big she could be trying to get off 101 and on the northbound 880. See, this guy just had to come on over like that. Now, I see this is going to be an exit only lane, so move over again. All right, now, oh, that's what's going on. I kept seeing stuff over here. All right, so it's a puddle. That's actually a nasty, uh, pretty nasty looking pothole over in that uh, HOV lane. Alright, I don't like this situation developing here. This car in front of me is uh, creating a little bit of a tight area where I don't know if this Kia in the next lane over is going to try to come over or whatever. And this black car staying there. Yeah. even go back over there because I don't know what that that brown car is doing but you can't just hang out in that middle lane in the middle through a normal lane with uh, unless I'm passing somebody just have to be extra alert what uh, watch what these, uh, these cars in front of me are doing Santa Clara Street Ala Alum Rock Street They're basically going around the east side of San Jose right now. Or downtown San Jose. Exit 386 Bravo, McKee Road, and Julian Streets. 386 Alpha, Santa Clara Street, and Alum Rock Street. Next exit down, 385 Bravo, 680, and 280. Mission San Jose, or is this something else over here on the right? Or just some big Catholic church, or so I don't know what it is. Pretty, pretty uh, prominent building there, and it has uh, crosses on two crosses on the top of it. So we have uh, there's a lot of historic missions in uh, here in the. Uh, State of California, and I don't know if San, if San Jose is one of them. Three eighty-five Alpha Story Road, half a mile away. So I'll be following 101 down to uh, the very first exit south of where Highway 152 meets up in Gilroy. And right off that exit will be where the truck stop and truck wash is that I will want to get my trailer washed down at. Come on, dude. Kind of trapped here. I'm trying to create leave the space that's in front of me already, and I got traffic in the adjacent lane that I can't get around or I can't move over for. Or because of whatever. Now, 
See, all this just because the damn Toyota Tacoma doesn't want to move over. When there are a combination of Toyota Tacoma is slowing everybody down trying to get over, and then traffic in the lane in front of me is following each other too closely, so we can't move over. You guys don't grasp any concept of uh, courtesy, do you? not being a contributor to bottlenecks like that. Expressway, it would go to the Capitol building or something, or to the city with the Capitol building at least. This one doesn't, it just loops around to the other, basically back up to the other end of, uh, of, of San Jose from what I can tell. Yerba Buena Road? Half mile, Hellier Avenue, one and a half mile. Blossom Hill Road, three and a half miles. other object, whether it's like a palm tree or a pine tree or 
whatever else. Uh, sometimes it's even like just like an obelisk or tower kind of thing. Um, like uh, Interstate 215 over at March Air Force Base, or Air Reserve Base actually is what I call it. Uh, at the Air Museum there is this tall white tower at the museum. That's actually a cell phone tower. I remember when they installed it and I remember they I, I know the person who used to be the curator of that museum at the time and she was talking about how they, you know, I can't remember if it was Verizon or AT&T or whoever, but you know, they offered to basically pay them rent to have the tower there. And then part of the negotiation was they had to, you know, they make a tower that was more uh, appropriate for that location, so they made this white, uh, this white obelisk looking kind of uh, tower. Oh, somebody's getting lit up on the other side by a motorcycle cop. Don't even look like they know they're being uh, lit up either. I don't know how they do. It took them a minute to figure it out. That's another clue you don't look in your mirrors enough. If a cop's sitting there the whole time for uh, for that long trying to pull you over, damn good clue that you're not paying enough attention. Okay, 85 northbound to Cupertino. Basically goes back off to north. Uh, you're basically up toward the west side of San, uh, San Jose. And of course we passed through Mountain View earlier. Exit 377 Alpha, Silicon Valley Boulevard and Bernal Road. Okay, Morgan Hill, that's the... Uh, I'm looking to... I'm going to head on my map a little bit. I see Morgan Hill further up. I think that's where the Walmart DC is, or not DC, but the Walmart store is that I was talking about earlier that I, that you can park behind. And there's a, there's a lot of eating and shopping and stuff available over there too. It's, it's, it's a pretty nice area, I thought. It's definitely worth stopping at if you're going somewhere quiet and say, uh, I don't know how safe it is, but it looks like a quiet place and I'd say it looks like a well-to-do area. Cochrane Road, that sounds familiar. It could be the exit that it's off for all I know. It is seven and a half miles away. don't know for sure that that's the exit it's off of, but it, that exit name sounds very familiar to me. It's either that exit or very close to it. The Gilroy, 20 miles away, that's where I, uh, that's where Highway 52 runs in, so now I know I'll have another 20 miles to go to get there, about there to get to Gilroy. And Morgan Hill is 10 miles away. Out climbing these hills over here to the left. Actually, both sides, but the left looks like it might be a little more prominent. Probably off limits anyway, private, private, uh, private property with fencing around it and stuff.
doesn't look like it would benefit me to move over anyway because uh, well, yeah, it doesn't look like it's going fast enough. Well, then again. Okay, all this is just because this one truck. I don't know what he's slowing down for like this. minutes. Salinas, 44 minutes. Los Banos, 80. So Yolanda will be going through your area to get down to Santa Maria, of course, or, uh, at some point in time today. Uh, probably do a different video for that. They'll probably... Uh, do one video for just getting from Oakland down to Gonzales and then maybe do another video for the uh, Gonzales to Santa Maria Lake. The Cochran Boulevard, uh, Cochran Road. Um, yeah, I think this is where the Walmart is. I can see like a little, like a tan colored box on the next to the road on right where I know there's a Walmart so I think this is the one where stop but anyway yeah the side street right behind Walmart Basically, if you get off this exit here, turn right, and then there's a street that goes around the, the back end of you know, the other side of Walmart. Um, you can even loop around if you want to get turned around and facing the... You know, to get facing back toward the street you came in off of. You park right there on the curb, grab, literally right behind Walmart. And camp out there if you need to. Just don't be one of those jerks who drop some piss bottles and trash and whatever else over there. That's a good way to get us removed from there. Pretty bad that we even that people even do that crap. Don't try to pass me dude. Don't get some stupid cute idea. There was a there was a car on the on ramp and they were going too fast for the situation. And I could tell they were going to try to, I mean, even though they were already at least more than a truck length behind me, I could tell by their speed and their position that they were going to try to come around uh, to the front of me and get into the space behind me, so. This guy's going too fast. He needs to back it off. Morgan Hill area. Next up is San Martin and then Rucker. Or I think it says Rucker. It's hard to tell on the map because the, the road the display keeps bouncing with the roads. Exit 366, East Dunn Avenue. Yeah, you're the asshole who needs to slow down there, Nissan Versa. Your beat up looking car. I'm not surprised you drive the way you do with the way you look like back you maintain your car. Uh, I'm not gonna sit here behind this damn truck the whole thing, all damn day. He's obviously not even keeping up with the speed limit. He's done Avenue with Morgan Hill. There's no trucks allowed off this exit. There's right, Home Depot, Safeway. Well, usually trucks park at Home Depot, but. Let's see if there's anybody parked over there. No, I can't tell. 
That's the residential area right there behind Home Depot said. So probably it might explain why they don't want trucks on that street. Tennant Avenue. Shouldn't be any more than about 10 miles away now. This exit here doesn't have an exit number. This is a this is classic California right here. You used to not have exit numbers on anything. And anywhere in the state, you used to not have exit numbers. You had to usually uh, used to be you had to know the name of the street or whatever the interchange was uh, to get off at if you're coming into the area. They don't use uh, state mile markers on the on the sides of the road either, like they do in all the other states. Well, U.S. highways, even in the, even in Nevada and Arizona, or well, at least Nevada, Idaho, uh, where else? Okay, like U.S. 93 and 95 and 97 and stuff. They go by county mile markers, not by state. And county mile markers are white with black writing. I think I've talked about this before. But anyway, yeah, that that exit there was a, a classic example of how okay, 152 is six and a quarter miles away, and that's the very next exit after that. Gilroy Garlic Festival shooting that happened not too long ago. I was actually in Gilroy the day, I think the day before it happened. Yeah, I actually posted uh, previously from there the day before it happened. Uh, very important, very sad situation for the people who were uh, victimized needlessly by that piece of shit. But. Basically, the, the garlic festival, or the park, uh, the park where they had the, the festival at, is over on the west end of Gilroy. If you, uh, if you look on the map, go to the way, go west up through US 101. There's a big park over there. That's where the festival was being held. That's where the that's where the guy, uh, I guess, jumped the fence or whatever, and and did his dirty work. There's another exit here with no exit number. You just have to go by the name of the exit, know where it's at in relation to where you're supposed to be if, uh, if, you're, in, if you're coming in the area. Well, of course, have your GPS tell you the right place. If you're, but again, shouldn't be relying on GPS. GPS could be good to give you an idea how far away you might be, but you should already know without ahead of time where to go and just, and know that your GPS is telling you to go the correct way. Because yes, even truck GPS will take you the wrong route sometimes. I don't have first-hand experience with this, but I've heard it plenty of times from people who do have GPSs, their truck GPSs. West on 152, and I'll go right by the. Uh, yeah, it goes right, right by the north. I think.
station coming up, what it looks like. You see a way in motion sensor here. And a sign for a way station, it looks like, up there. It's been a while since I've been through here. I forgot there's a way station over here. <coughs> it looks like this station is open, too. stations right now. But 
Machendal Pass Road, uh, well, East 152. I thought Machendal Pass might have been the area in between uh, Los Banos, or not, not Los Banos, but uh, coming over from I-5 across 152. I saw there was a high wind warning um, in Pacheco Pass area yesterday, uh, last night when I was coming through on I-5. That's why I was, I was just wasn't sure which, where exactly where Pacheco Pass was. I assumed it was 152. Okay, Monterey, uh, Monterey Street, one and three quarter mile. That's the one I'm getting off at. Truck stop will be right on the, just east, uh, basically just east of the 101. Just go ahead and hang out here and deal with the slower traffic. Get passed by other traffic anyway, and don't want to find myself not able to get back over when it's time to get off the freeway. As you see, yeah, a lot of trucks will get on 152 eastbound from here to go over to I-5. town over there it's uh well it's right, it's right by Santanella Santanella is where I stopped last night for uh, for a quick little break stop and grab a bite to eat if they're if all the stuff's over here looks like it is yeah Carl's Jr. at least oh yeah Jack in the Box is right there too all right yeah I could go for Jack in the Box okay someone's a little on the happy side over there Skipping and all that, and hopping and skipping or whatever, and well, can't complain about that. I'd rather deal with somebody who's too happy than uh, cheerful than somebody who's a miserable asshole. I know some people get annoyed by people who are overly, like, excessively happy, but how can you not want to deal with people like that? Jack in the box. The Garlic Farm. Laws of gas and diesel. Oh, there it is. 
place like this and here well, there actually is a spot there but so you do see some spots here but I need to get my trailer washed out other lane. That's why I came this way. No parking, you know? Block wash bay entrance. Okay, which side do I... Is this the entrance side or the exit side? No, oh, this is washed out right here. Stop and wait for attendant. Okay. truck stop here in Gilroy. I always go for a little quick little food and it is Anyway, guys, um, in the middle of getting my trailer washed out, and I uh, already done paying for it. It's forty dollars here. But they do cash or, or card, whatever. Uh, I don't know. They might. They might do EFS check. I didn't ask. I just paid by card, and I'll just get reimbursed for it later. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and park here when I get done, though. And yeah, 
grab a quick bite to eat over in Jack in the Box, I think, and then get you know, get rolling, or at least uh, you know grab something and I can, you know maybe eat on the run or something. I don't want to cut into uh, my downtime because I might jeopardize my chance of getting to the house by the end of the day. So, so I got to put down over 400, you know, almost 500 miles and. At California speeds, it's not easy to get uh, much more than 500 miles in a shift. Like the last night, I ran uh, 510, I think 510, 515, whatever it was, and I, I was already down to less than an hour left on my clock. So it gives you kind of an idea how hard it is to get over 500 miles in this in this state. Um, other states, 500 is easy, very easy to do. Um, so I can I can do a I can do 500 in less than an eight uh, eight hour stretch like you just saw me do the previous uh, uh, or like I just did two shifts ago. Uh, I went from Moriarty to Kingman, which was about what was it five? It was five ten ish five twenty? I forget. It was over 500. I uh, did that non-stop, no, uh, no stopping anywhere uh, for any purpose uh, before my eight hour, or I had, and I still had about 30, I think 30 something odd minutes left on my eight hour, um, eight hour clock before I had to stop for my break. So, um, so I say, I'm going to get 11 hours of work within a shift. So 500 is easy to do outside the state when I can do 70 miles an hour, when I can only do 55 legally, but usually do about 60 to be honest with you uh now it actually was going faster than that on uh, the stretch of i-40 east of barstow and uh, it's i still was there barely able to do 5 10 5 20 or whatever it was yeah last night um and, and i was already down to less than an hour on my clock so anyway uh i guess uh, i'll just continue I, uh, I'll, just, I'll end this video here or maybe and then do another video on the stretch from here to Gonzales to pick up my load and after I pick up in Gonzales I'll do another video that way the videos aren't all excessively long and then maybe you can only you only have time to watch a certain amount uh, looks like he's about done yeah he's closing the doors now uh, if you if that way if you get to a good stopping point maybe you know you want to take a break or whatever um, you don't have the opportunity to, to you know have a good place to restart from well, of course YouTube's usually pretty good about restarting you at the same spot anyway but sometimes it doesn't okay. he's still spraying the back the uh, the, the doors of the trailer right now okay he's done right. pull out and go find a place to park and head over to Jack in the Box Checking in at the same time as being left just before me, or at Central Market Transport. That's what it is. Yeah, I want to say the tractor I saw with the, the CMT truck I saw, but I think that was what it was. Uh, I think it was a red truck, though, not a. Let's see. Of course, I'm not a fan of parking in back. Oh no, these are. Never mind, these are curbside. Uh, these have curbs, so not a concern. No, these are reserve spots over here, it looks like. Um, I'll park right over here by this. It's 
traffic nicely. no space between uh, the lines I wouldn't want to park here very long and have to worry about getting hit by somebody who's not so good at parking <laughs> 